in a testament to resilience, London's borough market is buzzing. A foodie shrine still attracting thousands of Londoners and tourists daily. You'd scarcely know that two months ago there was complete mayhem. Three men running in and out of bars and restaurants, stabbing. They'd already rammed a vehicle into people on London Bridge. I was totally panicked, yeah. I mean, it was just, it's just terrifying. I mean, this is my community, these are my friends. So, yeah, it was incredibly, incredibly scary. This is wild venison from Scotland. Sean Cannon runs a charcuterie business, retail and wholesale. It's such a nice sausage, isn't it? Do you like a taste? The terrorist attack and crime scene investigation shut down his operations for a full 10 days. We couldn't get anywhere near my business. So I've got my market stall, but I also have my warehouse here and my office. All the cash from the week before was in the safe. Couldn't come near it. About £20,000 worth of stock. Um, but, you know, because we supply restaurants, so it's, it's volume and it was just all sat there going out of date. The entire market was cordoned off, loss and damage estimated at more than a million pounds. Many small business owners had insurance, but not for this. As with all of the other businesses around here, the insurers have pretty much just shut the door on us, uh, saying that they won't even look at it because it's terrorism and therefore we're not covered. When vendors assessed the loss, the bars which had property damage would have a claim, but for the others who lost revenues, it would be a fight. Because it's terrorism, traditionally since 2001, the attack on the World Trade Center, insurers all put the clause in, either terrorism or acts of God, i.e. the weather, no coverage. The nature of terrorism is changing so fast that insurers, they're not keeping up with it. 9-11 was so big and so costly, the insurance industry backed off covering future losses from terrorism, adding exclusions to their policies. Businesses could purchase extra terrorism insurance, but it's limited and costly. But the terror threat has changed. Here at a London market, on a bridge or a boardwalk, the attacks are not so much about blowing up big buildings with lots of damage. They're about urban carnage crowded places where businesses have little or no protection against economic loss. Insurers admit there is now what's called a coverage gap. In fact, at 9 o'clock on Sunday night, there was still a cordon just uh, around here, which meant that I had to close the office on the Monday morning. Julian Inoitzi is CEO of Britain's Pool Reinsurance, whose headquarters are just within hundreds of metres of the London Bridge attack. Poolery was set up in the wake of IRA bombings in the early 1990s. The British government backed a reinsurer to underwrite major terrorism insurance in Britain. If you think about um, 1993, which was when we were formed, uh, the, the, the terrorism modus operandi, in a sense, was to blow up buildings and try and cause damage to the economy. Since that time, everything has changed. Large-scale economic damage is now actually hurting the small businessman much more than it's hurting the big corporation as it was back in 1993. Poolry recognizes there is a gap that insurers need to offer more coverage for business loss due to terrorism, even where there's no property damage. That is a clear gap that we need to close and we are in discussions with the government, we're working with the government to say this is something that needs to be done. When the market reopened, there was a real sense of reclaiming. It was quite emotional when they, they rang the bell for the start of the day and some of the traders were in tears. I mean, they Borough Market is part of MP Neil Coyle's constituency. He's been working with the traders, the government and insurers to try to get compensation. If those businesses go under or people lose their jobs in those businesses, that was part of the attack. That's part of you know, the terror they wish to impose on people is to not go back or to lose those businesses. John Cannon used pressure, politics, and perseverance to get his insurer to finally agree to review his claim. In future, he says he would be willing to pay a slightly higher premium for coverage due to terrorism, but currently that's not on offer. We're not large businesses with pots of cash that can, you know, it's, it's every day. You've got to be out there trading. And if we don't want the terrorists to win, we've got to make sure they don't impact and stop us doing what we do as a society. Sadly, the threat is still constant, 
so that in Britain and elsewhere, small businesses will need greater protection from modern terror. Susan Ormiston, CBC News, London.